off, my name is Travis Smith. I want to first say thank you, a huge thank you for honoring me with your time today. And I promise I will do so in return. I will keep us on time and make sure we're done on time. If there's questions, feel free to stop me. I'd like for this to be kind of an ongoing conversation. Again, we will have fun because I like to have fun. If we're not having fun, then it's not, I don't like it. So we'll have a good time together. Um, orders of business, first off, please, out of respect for everyone else's time, put your phones away, turn them on vibrate, put your phones away, put them on vibrate. Um, this is gonna be great information for you. This has the potential of changing your life. And I don't want you to, or someone to distract from someone who's really trying to gain the information and have it be a useful tool in their lives. Um, quick merciless plug or shameless plug for my home group. Uh, my home group is one of the only brokerages in town that will allow you to do wholesaling. So just a heads up, this is something um, that I sought out quite a bit when I was looking at different brokerages. I've been with KW, I've been with another small kind of boutique brokerage, I've been with my home group now for, Kelly will correct me if I'm wrong, seven years? Wait, for what? Here. I've been here, yeah, here, same time. Okay, I just want to make sure. This fall. Yeah, so seven years I've been here. Mark and Jeremy are fantastic. Um, if wholesaling is something you want to add into your skill set, have a conversation with them. Just a simple conversation, answer Travis's class. I want to get involved with this just so they're aware because there's some things that happen outside of the brokerage with wholesaling and they, as long as you're working with me they've been very cool with that happening because I gave a promise swear that I wouldn't screw them on this so I will keep my word as long as you guys are working with me and within my home group your other brokers may have an issue so Double check with them before you get too far too deep in this. Um, down the rabbit hole. Yay! Again, for those coming in late, there's a sign-up sheet going around. Not late, you're pretty much on time. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet going around. Please give me accurate information. I am going to give you a tool that will be most helpful with wholesaling. And it's something that I, I, I should trademark this thing, but um, I give it as a free gift to help you because really I want to see you guys succeed. Um, Wholesaling is something that uh, really changed my family's life. It was a really big deal. So we'll get into it. Here is the plan for the day. We'll give you an intro, talk about entrepreneur's mindset. We're going to talk a lot about investors. That's why everybody's here, right? The investors have the money. We want to help them make more money so that what? We make money. Yes, okay, cool. We're on the right track. Uh, we're going to talk about and define what is a wholesale. We're going to talk about how to identify wholesale properties. The offer process and contract, this is critical. I'm going to encourage you at that point in time to take your phones out and take pictures. I will have slides up that it's gonna be important. Don't use it for texting and emails and phone calls. Right now, <laughs> this is your time. Um, exit strategies, we're gonna discuss that. Assignment versus double escrow. Has anybody heard those terms before? Kind of, couple head nods, that's good. Other people going, no, 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 that is. So we're gonna get into that in deep. And then we're, I'm gonna give you a bunch of resources. So. My story. I grew up in the back of my dad's pickup truck. Uh, he is an army veteran, uh, kind of a jack of all trades, mechanic, truck driver, and he did remodels when I was a kid. So as soon as I was 10 and able to carry a hammer, or more appropriately, hold a flashlight, mm -hmm. and there is very much a right and a wrong way of holding a flashlight. And if you haven't been taught, you need to be taught. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I grew up doing these remodels. So by the time I was 16 and had played football and baseball and had grown, I was strong enough to then, therefore, be able to hump a drywall sheet up or get OSB or sheeting up on the roof and roll trusses and do roofing and all of that, by the way, sucks. It's not fun. <laughs> um, which led me to look, coming to a realization that, man, working with my mind is so much more fun than working with my hands. And it, lo and behold, it makes you more money. Um, about high schoolish time, I came in contact with an extremely beautiful, hot redhead. Her name is Kirsten. If you're around me a lot, you're going to hear me talk about my partner in life, my wife. We've been married for 25 years next month, uh, together for 31. So we are high school sweethearts that have beat the odds um, to the chagrin of a lot, including family. But we'll dive bigger. Um, so 
we, she and I decided that education was really important. Um, she came from, uh, her parents both have master's degrees, her dad was a Vanderbilt graduate, and it reminds me of it constantly. Um, <laughs> so I went to NAU with my wife, she got a teaching certificate. I um, really tried to get into business, but there is a class called accounting, and accounting freaking sucks. <laughs> um, and I tried it three times and, and earned an F for fantastic. Um, fantastic fails miserably, so I shifted to a communications major, which comm major is a fantastic prerequisite to go either into the ministry or become a lawyer. So, and here I stand today, which we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, so I went to, we graduated, we got married. I graduated when I, my first job out of school. So we graduated in May, got married in September. Um, my first job out of school is I was a. Oh, oh my gosh! I know I'm late now. Um, I got a job as a social worker. So my wife at the time was making twenty three thousand dollars a year. I was making nineteen. So that doesn't really equate for wanting to be a provider, wanting to start a family, kind of not so good. So, um, so um, from that point, we, I was making not very much money. We needed to make more money for our family to, to work. So I had a buddy that was in Bible study with us at the time, um, and he said, hey dude, I know you have building experience. Why don't you come on out and give this a shot? So has anyone heard of McDowell Mountain Ranch? Has anyone heard of DC Ranch? Uh, how about Sun City Grant? Portobello? Sun City Festival? I was in charge of most of those communities. So. I went to work for UDC Homes back like back in the day, Charlie Keating's kid, you know, savings and loan debacle, all that stuff. So I got a real good verse in what is the building side of real estate. So I built for 20, 20 years or so. Um, worked my butt off as we started having children. My wife, when our first son was born, she went half time. My salary kind of absorbed that as I grew in the companies. Then when our second son was born, she went home, stayed home full time, and her salary again absorbed and kept things going. Who can tell me what happened 2008, 2009? What happened? Market took a shit, right? Okay, so I, I'm gonna talk about God and I'm also gonna test it. I know that doesn't allow on, but I play ball and I'm in construction, so forgive me already if I left a word slip or two. Um, market took a crap. So at that point in time, I was making over six figures for Dell Web. I was in charge of Cordobella, Sun City Grand, the kind of most of the West Side projects, Murado. I had a hand in all of those. So we went from starting 40 houses a day on one project and finishing 40 houses a day and having 40 houses a day, 40 houses at every checkpoint along the map, went from that level of production to three a week. So during which time, I was also in charge of hiring all of our support, all of the staffing. So I was what's called a project manager and we had superintendents that worked on the job site. So superintendents, customer service, and all of these folks were, do you guys remember it was a little crazy at that point in time with building, very similar to what we have right now. There wasn't enough people, there wasn't enough knowledgeable people to build. So we were hiring folks straight out of the military and straight out of college, sometimes out of the trade, and teaching them the skill of and the art of managing a construction project. Well, I don't know another way of teaching and training, which by the way is one of my absolute passions. I coach baseball, uh, we have a team that we in real estate, I coach there, love it. It's one of the, like, I love helping the next generation or someone learn a new skill set to benefit their life. I don't know another way of teaching besides being close. Like Haley, she's in our group, can I embarrass you? Mm -hmm. So I've known Haley since she was 16. She joined our group, her husband Paul's here. I've known them forever and they know my wife, they know my kids, 
that's the same dynamic I had with 25 superintendents. We were close. We, we worked together, we partied together, we hung out together. Well, when the market crashed, I was also in charge of having all those very, very hard conversations. Um, we had four divorces and a suicide out of that group of people during that time. And it was soul crushing for me because I loved them. They were secondary family. And I told my wife, I'm like, never again. Never again will we be in a position where we're helping and mentoring and teaching without being able to give a skill set so that folks can earn no matter what happens in the market. Which leads me to this. As soon as my time came, my mentor came to me one Friday, Friday gave me a pat on the ass and a severance check, said, hey, it's your turn, bro. And it was the most freeing moment I'd ever had. You see, I mentioned to you, I'm gonna talk about God, so God had given me wisdom that this was coming. I knew six months in advance that something was arrived, something was gonna change. And I had this gut feeling that it was gonna be good for my family, it was gonna be good for us. I always had a desire to start our own company, but I was scared out of my mind. Was, can anybody relate to that? Because it's on you, right? It's on you. By that time, we had three kids, a mortgage, two dogs, a lot of mouths to feed, so I was scared. But God said, trust me, trust me, this is gonna work. So when that fine Friday came, yes, now was the time. So we had started a remodel company that we would help people who had just purchased these new houses, turn them into their home. So we did man caves and landscaping packages and painting and countertops. Whatever people wanted, even if I had no freaking clue how to do it, yeah, you bet, we can do that, absolutely. So I'm gonna encourage you guys with this new skill set that that is the attitude you need to have. Can I do that? Fucking yeah, I can't. I'm sorry. Yes, I can. <laughs> yes, I can do this. Absolutely. Um, and again, I'm sorry if it slips out from time to time. Um, so we, I took a loan from a family member. I cashed in my entire 401k, everything I'd worked for for 25 years. Um, took our severance check, and I partnered with a couple mentors that taught me how to wholesale and taught me how to flip. So to date. Um, as far as building houses, I think somewhere around 14,000 houses over 20 years. Um, flips and wholesales, I stopped counting after 600 in the last 15 years. So I tell you this whole story to kind of give you an idea, like I kind of know a little bit about the subject matter, matter, and I want to give you some nuggets that can help you make this change in your life. Um, now, my wife and I, Kirsten, we own uh, Elite Integrity Group, so we coach new new or agents who've been in the industry for a while and want to change how they're doing real estate to be more productive. Um, I coach investors. Um, right now I have a buyer's list of about 500 cash buyers I work with, and there's they range in assets from they just got an inheritance or they're cashing in their 401k. One of the teachers that I worked with was a baseball coach for one of my sons. He had 50 grand that he had accumulated over 30 years and we used that and we started flipping with that money. Tripled that in 18 months. So all of the stories to date, I've never lost money on a wholesale. I've never lost money on a flip. And that's, I, I really have to give account to the mentors that taught me and to the good Lord above. So, um, I'm also recently in the last six months or 14 months, I also just got a general contractor's license. So we do flips, we do retail work, whatever our clients need, we help them with. So have you, just in my story, are you noticing we have a, how many revenue streams are coming into our household? This is really, really important. If you take nothing else out of this class, think about ways that you can increase revenue streams into your family's income. Because, let me ask you this. Right now, how much, is, how hard is it to get a buyer under contract? <laughs> so there are, I mean, there are <laughs> realtors in this business that focus only on buyers. 
And there are other uh, realtors in this <laughs> business that focus only on niches. I'm only a Marley Park agent. <laughs> I specialize only in Verado. What happens when the market shifts on you? You're freaking screwed. So that's why we do multiple great streams of income. There are times when we don't have a lot coming in with buyers, but we have listings. We have remodels coming in. We have investments coming in, coaching money. All of that helps our entire family. So that's really what I'm trying to get you to grasp out of this. So here's my success wheel. Uh, this is something that we really came up with that I don't really know another way to make it work. So it's kind of like a three-legged stool. This is the top-down ver uh, version of that. So in the center and at the top of that school, uh, stool is God. Whether you believe in him or not, he's there. That's up to you and him. You all figure that out. But the reason I say that you need to have an understanding of that there is God in this place is because we need to have some type of accountability. So if you're hanging around me at all, you're going to hear me talk about God. You're going to hear me talk about Jesus. That's who I am. What you choose to be, that's up to you. That's between you and him. I'm not going to give you any pressure. You figure that out. However, I know this is my truth. God runs everything, and I have to be submissive to that. Underneath God is the three legs. One is our body. We have to keep our body in some semblance of shape so that we can do the things that he has purposed us to do in this life. I'm a dad. My sons played baseball. My daughter danced and cheered. So there was lots of times I was in the pool stunting my daughter. There's lots of times my oldest son played, uh, he was a catcher in Iowa. He played all the way through club, high school, you name it, so did my middle son. Um, I have a 90% tear in my rotator cuff from all the batter practice I, batting practice I threw, and it was worth every second. I would not trade a bit of it. I had to keep my body somewhat in line so I can do that. Carrying your kid up the stairs to put them to bed. How precious is that? You gotta be able to perform. Carrying a piece of drywall in or carrying tile in to do a remodel, you gotta be able to perform. So that's enough said there. Relationships. I mentioned to you that I work with 500 cash investors. These people range in money from 50 grand <coughs> to 800 million and everywhere in between. The ones that have a lot of it are most, some of the most miserable human beings I've ever met in my life because all that matters to them is the next buck. And they think that their kids are only after them and want to spend time with them because of the money. Relationships are critical. How we define relationships is how you show love. Love is a one directional, one directional operation. Anytime that there's a hook on the end, that's not love, guys. So we talk in our business and within our coaching quite a bit about what are you doing this week to pick someone that you're going to show love to here. Your action. Love is an action word, by the way. Action. So what action are you going to take this week to show that person you love? That's what makes all of this worth it. Business. Our business is only here to fund our lifestyle. That's it. Thanks for joining us. Um, there's no identity in who I am wrapped up in what I do. What I, my identity is, I'm a child of God. That way, no matter what happens, I'm okay with me. I learned this the hard way. It almost destroyed my family. I thought I was a builder. I was next in line at Dell Webb to run the whole valley when everything took a shit. Groomed for it spent time coaching, spent time in education, and it crushed my soul because that's who I thought I was. God showed me another way, a better way. Now, no matter what, I know my identity is wrapped up in that and not what I do. So that's why I talk about this. You use it for what you want, but this has been an extremely useful tool for our business. All right, entrepreneur mindset. Um, do you all have an LLC? You are in business for yourself. <coughs> what I did learn with working with all of those knucklehead idiot trade contractors that I worked with for years, the only difference between them and most of us was darling, in there, the guts to take the risk. That's really it. So take the risk, start your own business. So multiple revenue streams. I'm gonna harp on this throughout the conversation. 
this acronym, business, at the end, you remember that. Um, tell me with a real estate license, and again, those who are not real, do not have a real estate license, this is something that's really important for you guys to get, especially with wholesaling, it's very important. Uh, you can do it without it. it it's like, uh, anybody watch UFC? Mm -hmm. How successful would a fighter be with no grappling skills in UFC? They get the buck kicked, right? Yeah. It's the same level. If you do not have a real estate <coughs> license, wholesaling, it's not going to work. So, with a real estate license, tell me, what would a, a B stand for? Uh, Hires. Yes, good job. How about an S? Sellers. Sellers. You guys are brilliant. R. <laughs> Rentals. Rentals, good job. WS. Yes, all there. Yes. Mm -hmm. F and F. Fix and flip. Good job, guys. C. Commercial. No. <laughs> so, this is everything <laughs> that we teach and train our group to do. <coughs> so, my wife is actually doing a commercial lease right now. We've sold commercial buildings. Are you allowed to do that with a real estate license? Mm -hmm. Can you still do it even if you predominantly do residential? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as you have someone that's there to help you, right? All right, cool. Take advantage of this. We should be talking to our database about all of these things, all these skill sets. Mm -hmm. Volume is the key. Multiple deals, multiple lines in the water to catch a fish is the way to make money in this industry. It's a way to survive, honestly. The only way to survive. Because there's shifts and turns and ups and downs and all that type of thing. Uh, four years ago, having a buyer was like, oh, yes, right? Now what is it? Sellers. Listings, sellers, exactly. So having dip all of this in your wheelhouse helps with volume. Uh, you want to lead with earnings. So I'm giving some basic business acronym in this too. Before you start investing in leads and before you start investing in um, one of our guys just got these bottle flipper things with his name and uh, engraved in it to give to his clients. Before you start investing heavily in advertising, you want to make sure you're closing transactions, right? Because your kids and families have a habit of eating. So we want to make sure we lead with revenue and grow as you earn. Um, coaching. I'm going to talk about this here and there a couple times. Coaching is absolutely imperative. Absolutely imperative. If you do not understand how to do something, only way to learn is to have someone who's been there and done that before. Obviously there's books to read, that type of stuff, but that's still someone who's been there and done it before. If you're trying to learn a new skill set in a certain market, consult with someone who's done it before. Don't reinvent the wheel. And guess what? It's gonna cost money. If it doesn't cost money, if someone's saying this is free, freaking run. <laughs> run. I work for, I, and there might be a couple of KW agents in here, and if you are, I'm sorry. I worked for KW when I first got my license. They put me in a pro training program with title reps to try to teach us how to capture clients in the buyer, buyer, sellers. Is that what a title rep does? No. Like our real estate industry, I related to basically giving birth in the street. You go get your 90 hours of education, and then you're armed and dangerous, right? Sign up for the brokerage. Do you know jack shit about how to sell a house? No, you're scared out of your mind to try not to get sued. That's all that the freaking real estate 90 hours does for you, right? Having someone as a mentor to teach and coach you so that you can actually do business is critical. I didn't find that at the two brokers I was at before. I learned the hard way. I went through the pain, went through all of it. So now when we have folks in our group, we can say, hey, there's a big steamy pile of crap right there. Don't step in it. Sidestep, let's shift, let's move. So find someone to help you with that. I had fantastic mentors. I have beers with them still on a weekly basis. We sit, we talk, and we talk about the market. Uh, Rusty and Chris, who taught me how to, to flip and wholesale, um, each of them, you, you, if you met them on the street, Rusty is a surfer from California, like 55 years old, still surfs to this day. He's worth $8 million. He wears bands and board, board shorts and usually holds the t-shirt that holds it. You have no idea this guy's worth $8 million. But his knowledge base, his entrepreneur mindset is something that helped me tremendously. So pay attention to who you're bringing into your life to help coach you. All right, investors. 
It's really important to know your audience when we're talking to investors. There's different types of investors and they're all along the scale. So some are full-time investors. Characteristics of full-time investors, they are extremely fast-paced. They are intense. They know their numbers. They're gonna know your, their numbers forward and backwards and they're gonna know, most likely, they're gonna know their niche better than you do. Your, our job is to be a resource to them. Um, key indicators, they're gonna talk about margin standards. Uh, what does that mean? Margin. Profit. Is there ROI? You guys heard of that? Will they talk in those terms? Yeah. They're talking about percentages. <laughs> and that's what they're going to be really keying off of. If I'm investing this much money, what am I? What's the percentage I'm making on it? They're going to have several act exit strategies. If they're going to take down a wholesale property, they're going to know how they can get out of it. Getting stuck with something, paying. I used to pay 18 percent on my hard money loans. So getting stuck with something was not an option, right? Those kids, they like to eat. If I keep paying my buddy Denny a whole bunch of money, my kids don't eat, but his do. Um, and they have contract labor. Okay? These, are the, these are the characteristics of a full-timer. Part-time, little fix the Felix. Uh, Part-time investors, they're very patient. They're gonna be scared out of their minds. Usually, uh, I relate it to, um, do you remember your first date? Do you remember going to prom? Do you remember all of those, the first day at school, that feeling that you felt like you were gonna throw up at any given moment? That's these guys and ladies. They're scared out of their mind. They have a zillion questions, ranging from what color should we paint it to do you think it would be okay if I just bought beer and pizza for my friends and we came over and we did the cabinets? Like, no, <laughs> that's not okay. <laughs> um, and they're going to rely heavily on you as the expert. That's what you're presenting yourself as, right? You're an expert in this. Are you today? No, do you know people who are? Those who you work with, are they experts? Okay. Present yourself, carry yourself as an expert. Because that's what they're there for. They want to know it's going to be okay. They want to know that risking this biscuit is gonna work. So you're there to reassure. Key indicators, limited extra exit strategies. They have one or two outs of this. So they're very limited. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more as we go. They're concerned about making a specific dollar amount. Travis, if I buy this house for $100,000, and we're gonna put 50 grand into it, and my carry cost is $20,000, <laughs> can we make 10 grand? Is it possible in today's market? Those are the questions you're gonna be asked. They're gonna be running numbers really quick in their mind, not on paper, because they're brand new. They don't know what to write down. Your job is to teach them. That's our job. Um, they take longer to evaluate deals, and a lot of times they're like, hey, my dad and I can hang the lights and the fans. That'd be okay, right? Yeah, that's okay. As long as you don't shock yourself, you turn the power off. So you gotta coach them even on some stuff like that. So, when we market, we're gonna to market to both of these folks, both all the way across the spectrum. My father-in-law has been a great, um, uh, the word slip in my saying, I would say, we, we would go over for Sunday dinner and we would have 70 year olds at the table and six months old at the table and everyone in between. When we have dinner, everybody should be able to eat. Everybody should get nourishment from this. That's the mindset you need to have when you're sending out marketing to your investor database. I said it, database, separate database, separate database. Oh my gosh, business one one. Same thing we do with real estate, right? Separate database for your investors. You're gonna to need to understand the need sets of the investors you work with. This is so important. You have to understand that. You're gonna to need to know the terms. Your fast paced, high intensity, full-time investors, they're gonna know ROI, they're gonna to wanna to know the cap rate. You guys remember how to do cap rate? Mm -hmm. Who wants to share cap rate? Okay, we won't get into that. Um, <coughs> market areas, certain per, certain investors only like to buy in certain areas. Um, text, when I do marketing to our investor pool, I send a text. I have uh, a big purple dot, I use that. 
and I have it set up so I can blast out to 500 people. So Podio does that as well. There's a few, uh, Big Purple Dot I think is 40 bucks a month. And it's a nice CRM. You can use it for buyer sellers and uh, your wholesale database. Um, email, it, text gets open 90% of the time, which all of you when you get a text, what happens? Ding, oh my gosh. <laughs> Same thing with an investor. Oh my gosh, I got a fight. Somebody loves me, right? So email is usually about a 10% open rate. You want to follow with an email. The email is important because it gives a little bit more information. It also makes you look like the professional. All right, here's an example text. Uh, this is one we sold uh, about three years ago. Uh, 761 East Denham Trail, zip code 2600 square feet, five bedroom, two and a half bath with a loft, 2006 build, needs some cosmetic rehab, I put everything into a shared drive, usually on Google, and that gives you a link that's like what, half a page long. So I go over to Bitly, I change that link into a Bitly, so it doesn't take up too many characters in your text. What's this? Wholesale price. Wholesale price, 190,000. What's this? Estimated rehab. Estimated rehab, 15,000. After rehab value. After rehab value. Good job. After repair value, good job. 265,000, is this a good buy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's that at this? 100%, yes. It's a hell of a buy back then. Yeah. Three years ago? Yeah, it was a hell of a buy. And it's like, we say this all the time with our investors, we are looking for base hits. Um, <coughs> I'm a baseball guy, so I talk a lot about the baseball paradigm. We're looking for a base hit every day. Every day a base hit. And every once in a while, the big dog comes to the plate and he hits it out, right? Those come along. I've made as little as $1,000 on a wholesale deal and as much as $30,000 on a wholesale deal. It was on a $200,000 property. To make 30 grand on a real estate transaction, what do you have? What's the price point got to be at a 3% commission? 1.74. Mm -hmm. On a 3% commission. Mm -hmm. $1 million. $1 million to make $30,000. So think about the effort that you put into a standard real estate transaction. They usually take 30 days, right? My average wholesale takes less than two weeks. And you get paid straight from title without all the hair. <laughs> Just saying. Here's my example email. Same stuff, 761 East Denham Trail, Santan Valley, give a little bit more information where it's located. 2667 square feet, five bedrooms, spelled out, two bathrooms, spelled out, with a loft, built in 2006, community pool, a little bit more love there, and a 5200 square foot lot. I'm gonna go into detail, what does it need? It needs carpet, paint, landscape, some cleanup back there, floors and countertops. Close of escrow, 831. Wholesale price spelled out, 190. Estimated rehab, 15K, estimated uh, after repair value, 265 picks with the old gargantuan long drop box bullshit. Um, here is the important stuff. This has to be critical on your emails. The first contract and $5,000 non-refundable earnest deposit per property to title wins. This sets the rules with your investor database. Contract. $5,000 non-refundable. They are the first, that's the person that's gonna win. That keeps it fair. <coughs> as soon as you start showing favorites, you go, hey, you know, Paul's gonna go. I'm gonna hold in there, I'm gonna hang in there for Paul to quit screwing around with whatever he's doing that day and eventually look at the email and eventually look at the pictures and then make, let him make his decision. You can't do that in this business. You, Life isn't fair. If you want to continue to keep your relationships with everybody that you're working with, because your database is going to grow, these are the rules we play by. Contract and five grand non-refundable. That's who wins. First one there, cool. Non-refundable means what? You ain't getting your money back, no matter what. It ain't coming back to you. So they're committed at this point, which is what we want. We want a commitment. Um, Call me for access, buyer to bear file, facts and figures. Buyer pays all closing costs. <clears throat> That's a beautiful thing, right? 
means we don't. Ask me about the 100% um, property and rehab financing program. I've got a couple lenders, partners that I work with that they'll not only buy the house, they'll also help you with the rehab. Money. Thank you. Try nice. Any questions on that before I keep going? This is what I have for me. You guys good? Okay. All right. Developing an investor database. Have you guys heard the saying if you're trusted with the small stuff, you'll get trusted with the big stuff later? This is that. How you nurture these relationships is critical to how your business is going to run. Relationships, especially in the wholesale and fix and flip industry, are absolutely critical. Um, there's a new wholesaler born every day. Actually, there's several. And most of them are complete sausages. That's just who they are. They're flash in the pan, looking to make a quick buck, and they don't tell the truth. What? They're not held to a higher standard because they don't have what? License. license. If we have a license, then we go to the, um, the, the class that talks about code of ethics, what do we become? Realtors. We're held to a higher standard. That's why it's so important to have that real estate. <laughs> Demonstrate a heart of contribution. Whenever you're going into business with an investor, you are talking to someone's mom, someone's uncle, someone's dad, someone who has their skin in the game, meaning that nut of money that they're gonna put down, they have to have trust in you. So how you deal with these folks is critical. Remember, if you're here just to make money, you're in the wrong spot. If that's what you're leading with in real estate, just might as well go down, go get a job, because that's, that's making money. If you're here to start a business and help people, if you don't have a heart for people, wrong business, wrong business. How many of you guys have worked with sausage agents that are all about themselves? How long do they last? Too long. Some of them, some of them, <laughs> most of them are flashing the most of them. By the way, how often do people re get their real estate license renewed? Once. Every two years, right? That's what, what we're supposed to. Out of 10 people, who actually does it? Two. One. One. Really? One. So if you've renewed your real estate license, you're one of the 90% or 10%. So good on you if that's what you've done. Now it's time to add something else into your wheelhouse. I always say, I'm here to help. It's not just something that rolls off the edge of the tip of my tongue, it's something I genuinely mean. Uh, we're gonna advertise on social media. Let's talk about that for a second. What are the rules for social media as a realtor? Just so we don't get slapped by an EDR fine. We gotta put that on the road here. The guy who doesn't have a license is freaking <laughs> slapped. <laughs> Sorry. 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 <laughs> I'm really poking him this last day. <laughs> um, you have to put on there the equal housing opportunity, right? You have to put that you're a realtor. You have to disclose those items. And what, what else? There's one other thing we have to disclose. Brokerage. Brokerage. Good job. Good job. So when you're advertising this stuff, don't forget that. That's how you can really tell who's a sausage wholesaler from someone who's a professional. If you see that out there. Okay? Um, I find, like we said, succeed with the small stuff, more stuff will come. As you see success, most of our business at this point, guys, in, across the board, is repeat referral. We worked our ass off for several years and we've got to the point where investors have friends. They run in the same circle. <coughs> oh, Travis, keep the blood on this for me. We made 30 grand. You should talk to Travis. Oh my God, Travis, my 401k is making 6%. I just noticed that you guys made 30%. Can you tell me more? That's an easy conversation, right? And what are, what are we doing for that client? Help. Help? Cool. All right. We're on the same page. Is everybody having fun so far? Mm -hmm. Good information? Is working for you? Cool. So let's talk about what is a wholesale property. There's a, my working definition from the Travis Smith Dictionary of Awesomeness. Is on the, it's an undervalued property in the area in an area of appreciation. What does that mean? Buy a house, the ugly house on the block. 
She was pregnant at the time. Oh. She ran out of there just puking her guts out. Oh, like, yes, this is perfect. We're going to make a ton of money. Because <laughs> we're, we're the ones that fix it. Like, who, who's another trade that makes a killing? Septic. No one wants to deal with shit. Right. It's the same thing with wholesales. If a house smells like crap, if it looks like crap, um, one of the houses we didn't surprise, it's a 1,200 square foot house. We hauled out of that house four 40 yard roll-offs wow. of trash. Wow. Like you couldn't even walk through this place. It was waiting <laughs> through garbage and crap. It was gross, but nobody else wanted to do it. And we made money on the flip. We made money in contracting it. And we made money on the sale because I'm a licensed freaking realtor and I can sell that house. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? See how this all plays together? Let's talk about values. Market value. What's market value? Price buyers willing to pay. Price buyers willing to pay and the seller's willing to sell. Let's talk about price value. What's the price value? Well, that's what, you think it's worth. what the bank thinks it's worth. That's what the money that they're going to loan on it, right? Anybody have problems with appraisals right now? <laughs> Wholesale value. This is critical. Critical. I get calls all the time. Travis, got a deal. Okay, tell me about the deal. Oh man, it's a piece of shit house. I'm like, all right, cool, you're talking my language. Tell me about the deal. <laughs> all right, it's over by Arrowhead. Yeah, I think we can get it. It's 1,200 square feet. I think we can get it for 425. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, did you run comps on it? Yeah, comps are like 430. <laughs> Is that a deal? No. <laughs> okay, 70 to 80% of market value is what we're after. The closer we're to 70%, the better deal we're going to get. The, the more likely it is that we're going to be able to take it down, sell it to an investor, and close. This trips people up. Does everybody understand this? Okay. What's market value again? Okay. So why is the investor paying so much for homes right now? Because they have the money. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, my whole different different strategies. Every investor out there has a different strategy. So a lot of the houses that I flipped seven, eight years ago, we were purchasing off the courthouse steps. We were going and bidding on them with a bidding service. We'd take the properties down. We'd have to put down ten thousand dollars then and close with the remaining funds within twenty four hours. Worked great, great system. Then the hedge funds. You ever heard of Blackstone? Blackstone came to town and they started paying retail value 10 years ago. And now there are half a million homes in the Phoenix Metro that have sat vacant for 10 years. And what's happening? They're slowly getting introduced to the market. And they're pieces of crap house that nothing's happened on for 10 years. And what has Blackstone done? Double their money. So different marketing strategy, different business uh, alignment for Blackstone than my buddy John Hensley, who was a retired teacher. Very different. So yes, there are investors. Off, we're going to talk about OfferPad and Zillow and um, with Open Door. those idiots here in a few minutes. Um, 72 sold. I don't like those guys either. Um, we're going to talk about them here in a few minutes. And if they want to talk to me, they can call me after. Okay. Um, so good question. Good question. If you have questions, please stop me. Okay, I promised you something, right? Yep. A gift. This is going to be my gift to you guys. This I call my value analytics or my wholesale wholesale house cost worksheet, which is a long record. So this is what I base my business on. This is how I evaluate deals. This is critical. We're going to go through this line by line. If you fill out your the sign-in sheet and give me your phone number and your email address, I will send a blank one of these to you that all you have to do is put in three numbers and it crafts out brilliance. So, okay, so we're gonna use this, this house uh, arbitrary numbers. The purchase price, which means what we are buying from directly from the seller, we're buying this house at $200,000. 
front side costs. So the hard money loan, I'm having to put down $160,000. What does that mean? We need, we need the hard money guy, right? What, what difference do I have to come up with? 20%. Good job, I love the numbers, good job. 20%, so right now I have to have 40 grand, that, that's my pay to play right now, right? So far, so far, Yeah. 40 grand. So my down payment, oh my gosh, I can give you the answer, $40,000, there's your down payment. <laughs> Interest on the hard money, <clears throat> now I get terms of 10%, sometimes eight, depends on the lender I'm using. Um, I'm gonna carry it for four months. Why would the earth, would I wanna carry the house for four months? Or why would I budget for that? Because FHA won't give a loan. What else? FHA won't give a loan. Ding, 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 why? You can't make over 20% on a... No, there's a 90 uh, the period. Seasoning period, yep, right. seasoning period. That's, in order to get an FHA loan on a property, you have to, the seller or the, the new buyer has to own the property for 90 days. That is to slow down investors. That's the whole purpose of it. That's why the feds put this rule in place. So I know I have a, at least a 30 day flip. Usually I get it done in two weeks, but I'm gonna budget for 30 days. And then I know I'm gonna carry it for three months and I have to sell it in there too. So you're allowed to market it, you just can't have it close within 30 days, or within 90 days of when you took possession. So on $160,000 at 10% interest, I'm paying $1,300 and change a month, which at four months, $5,300. I have to pay $1,300 per month. What's your question? question for you, on the 90 days to close, is it close point or contract point? Close, close. Okay. So you can be under contract before you close. So yeah. you can legit go, most of the time when I flip, I will put in, and you'll see notes also on their flippers, it's the, uh, conventional or cash. So they'll put that right in there, and in the sub, in the private marks or semi-privates, eligible for that FHA transaction on the next day. Okay. Closing costs. So we're talking about relationships here pretty soon. I've got a fantastic relationship with our title company. I do a whole open policy. I'm usually gonna pay a little bit more up front on my closing costs. So my closing cost for this budget was about $1,500. Remodel, $30,000. We have to keep insurance on the house, right? Okay, I had an idiot investor that had a family and was not extremely well off. And he thought it was a grand idea to save $700 on his $200,000 investment plus to not get insurance. I'm like, damn it, what was wrong with you? He skated by, it didn't hurt him on that one, but it did three deals later when his house got broken into and all his materials were stolen. Mm -hmm. So he lost eight grand in materials by not putting $700 insurance policy. So help your people be smart. <coughs> Uh, APS and water, that's carry, you, need, you have to have power, you have to have water to do the flip. Total cash investment so far, $78,000. People ask me all the time, how much money do I need to have to get involved with this? All of this is scalable, scalable. So if you're trying to capture like a condo, I flipped one um, six months ago in Sun City West. We bought it at 140, we put 30 into it, we sold it at 225. Good deal, mm -hmm. everybody won. So everybody was happy. So if all of the numbers still work out, so when I give you this, the three areas that you need to plug in are the purchase price, the remodel cost, and the ARV, which I'll show you that in a second. So here's your front side costs, about 80 grand. So 80 grand is a nominal safe amount of money to have. If you're short of that, if you're 50 grand, we can pull it off on a condo and build your build your nest egg up so you can start making money or helping an investor make money. But it's all possible, but you have to have at least fifty to thousand dollars at least to get in the game. Okay? Um, and that's when you're talking with your investors. By the way, 401ks you can borrow against those. We have a program that 
allows for them to purchase with a 401k investment. That works. Um, backside costs. So our estimated renovated sales price, or ARV, is 300000 Commission, 5%. Why is it 5%, not 6%? Because you get more sales. We get a little discount to help out. Mm -hmm. Why would I do that? Because that's what they like to see. If I, oh, do, if I discount the investor that I've already made, I'm making money on his purchase, or that, that person's purchase, and I'm gonna make money on the flip because I'm a contractor. Doesn't it behoove me sure. to help them out a little bit and do it for two points on the backside? That gives them a little warm fuzzy and they say, Travis is a good guy. Come back. He loves me, which I do. I appreciate them. I, I want them to continue to want to invest with us. So I help them out always, every time. And I do it automatically. Just say it straight up. Hey, <laughs> if you buy this, I'm gonna discount you on the backside. So I'm gonna save you. $3,000. You down? Everybody was okay. <laughs> so, um, and it shows them I appreciate that. So all your title fees, total fees on the front side, everything slated out. Total earnings, $45,000. On a $200,000, well actually an $80,000 investment, you're making $45,000. What's your ROI? Yeah. How often do you get deals like this? How often do I get deals like this? My first year doing it, um, we did 28 of them. Then over the years, they just roll in. You know, I I get deals like put like this, deals like this put in front of me probably three times a month, four times a month. So when I say like this, this if you look at the numbers we have here right now, like six is percent of the year. Fifty-seven percent. Yep, fifty-seven percent of the year. Mm -hmm. Well, this is, sorry, the ROI is 57% of the total investment. That's how I figure it. It's what, what money are they going to put in to what money are they going to get back. So that's how you figure out your, your, your ROI. Because they're not putting 200000 right down, right? They're only putting forty, and then the fees, the remodel. So their total invest altogether is 80000 Then they'll earn 45000 So question. It was purchased for $200,000, right? And it was sold for 300 Yeah, right. That's if you're talking about purchase of the house yeah, and yeah, sale. Right. Correct. That is correct. I I figure it on what is their actual money invested because that's what people want to know, right? Like how much money do I need to have? If if you put in front of them like, hey, dude, we're going to buy this at two hundred, it should sell at three hundred. Everybody's going to have a little bit of a different mix of what their costs are. Not every investor I work with uses us to do the flip. Some have their own crew, some have their own system, some have their own need set. So they want to know those type of numbers, but they want to hear from me, what do I think this rehab is going to cost? So any questions on this? Is this making sense so far? Okay. So value to the investor. Wholesalers, or wholesales come in all kinds of different shapes, sizes, um, so many different ways that you can do a wholesale. I have wholesaled the same property three times. <laughs> so you, you nice. get all kinds of crazy. This one was an absolute pig. It's uh, off of 12th Street, north of I-17. It had four studios, four one bedrooms, and six camper trailers on it. I sold that once for 200,000, I made 20 grand. Sold it again for 220, I made 15,000 sold it again for 250 and I think I made another 10 grand so it guys it comes in so many different ways so we want to keep our eyes open for different opportunities because they're not all the same I've done condos I've done um, I haven't done a commercial I haven't done that but condos houses and um, even like small apartment complexes you can turn those into condos so there's so many different ways to skin this cat. And every investor is looking for a <coughs> different type of deal. So that's why it's so important to really understand those who you're working with. Um, there's not a one size fits all. Investors have their preferences, formulas, fits, areas, specific desired features, stigmas, rituals, yes, superstitions, and feelings. So 
investors don't always base things off of facts. <laughs> I had an investor that I worked with, I did probably 200 deals with this guy. If he did not have his lucky socks, that day, he wouldn't buy them. So I started carrying an exact pair of lucky socks <laughs> in my truck. And if he did not have those lucky socks, I had them. <laughs> I had another investor, he only liked corner lots. That's all he liked. That's all he would buy. So if I had a corner lot, I knew I was calling Rick. So it's knowing what their vibe is, knowing the language to speak. It's different every, and by the way, another helpful hint for the real estate industry, we are there to serve the client. It's our job to change our voice to help them hear what they need to hear. The way I behave with guys I met on the ball field, baseball dads, speak a totally different language than I do with Aunt Susie. So we have to be cognizant of who our audience is and how we're speaking and what terms we're speaking with them. So I'm being myself up here. This is who I am. When I'm working with someone else, I'm still myself, but I curtail it to the audience. Make sense? Mm -hmm. okay. Our role is to help them see the value. Identifying wholesale properties. So Kind of how I got started, a um, little story. I picked up a house, the very first one. I bought it from the bank. Uh, it was off of 31st Avenue and Greenway. I bought it for $70,000. And being the no go-getter I am, I was like, you know what? I have to wait 90 days to sell this anyway. So I am gonna do this flip myself. <laughs> All myself. And this house was a total chaos. It was bad. So we. We had at one point, we pulled the shower out, and do you guys remember the movie The Mummy? When all those bugs just got the roach, <laughs> big freaking roaches. So we had to roach bomb it. I went in the next day with a push broom and a 55 gallon bucket, filled the thing up. Wow. Cool. Twice. We found cocaine in that place. <laughs> crazy. Make that. I, didn't, I didn't make any money out of that. It wasn't enough to sell. <laughs> But, and I didn't use it either. Just <laughs> so it's, it's what I was working on that project when, because of my aptitude or because of my desire to find another property, I had enough money to do two at a time. So I was looking for another project. And I had a buddy call me and say, Travis, I got this deal. It's down off 12th Street and Dunlap. Are you interested? Like, yeah, man. I'm, I'll meet you there. Cool. Just headed out there. Left, left a, a laborer there that was helping me sweep up bugs. Um, rolled over there and uh, it was November so it gets dark around 536 o'clock right so I showed up at 545 got my flashlight he told me where he hit the key I opened this place up he's like dude it's $20,000 it's all you gotta buy this in for I'm like okay I'll go check it out crack open my flashlight walking through the house it smells horrendous I'm like all right <laughs> I'm so like there's literally people are not only peeing in the house, they're doing all kinds of nasty things. Like, we're finding pots. It's gross. Cruising through, take out my flashlight, looking. Lo and behold, I pop into a closet, and this homeless guy jumps out at me, scared the freaking gongers out of me, which is also why I carry it everywhere I go now. So that's, we can talk about that once another time, but everybody has their own opinion on that, but me, myself, I'm going home at night. Um, so that. I, I'm like, okay, so I, I get back in the truck, heart still pounding, make a call, hey dude, yeah, I'll buy it, I'll take it. Um, on my drive home, I get a call from another buddy. Hey, Travis, I'm desperate for a house. Do you have anything available? I'm like, yeah, you know what? As <laughs> <laughs> luck would have it, I've got this gem of property <laughs> off of 12th Street in Dunlap. My price is $40,000. Hell yeah, I'm in. I did not do a dang thing and made $20,000 on my very first wholesale. So that is why this is so important to learn this skill set. It's critical. That got me hooked right away. Boom, I'm in and I want to know a lot more about this. So that's why I talk about what do other people have available. So as you're developing your database of investors, you're also talking to friends. Yes. Yeah, just a quick question. Yeah. I mentioned you do with the bank. How did you find a property from the bank? During that point in time, there was the market crashed. 
So there was a lot of bank owned properties. There still are bank owned properties, <coughs> but they're bringing them to market with a realtor at this point. So now, yeah, now our strategy is to go direct to seller. And I'm going to tell you a lot about more about that as we go. It's a great question. Great question. There are still bank owned properties. Something else to kind of keep in mind: what happened with COVID? Huh. A lot of people sat around and did nothing and collected government checks, right? Mm -hmm. Did they pay their bills? No. 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 <laughs> What's happening to those tenants that were paying a thousand dollars a month? Probably being kicked out right now. No, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much do they owe? Three. Four months. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. So they three months is three three grand. Talk to me about the fees. Twenty five dollars a day, thirty five dollars a day for three months. How much is that? Yep, stay in the house, eight, nine grand. Mortgages, people who have been in deferment and they lost their job, and they don't have credit worthiness anymore. Do, is the bank going to take a peek at that? So, are you guys in the right place right now? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, you are. It's coming. It's coming. Have you noticed in the last 28, 30 days, how many listings were on the market 28, 30 days ago? 9,600. How many listings mm -hmm. are on the market right now? 11,700. 11, mm -hmm. Is there a shift happening? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are your buyers that have not been able to get a freaking sniff at anything, are they going to be able to capitalize? Mm -hmm. Yes. Also, mm -hmm. we're going to have a piece of shit houses that people don't want to buy on the market anymore. The wholesale houses that have been going for retail on the market mm -hmm. aren't going to get bought up anymore. Cool, right? This is cool. So, when you find someone else's property, you ask their permission. They have a wholesale. Uh, they have a wholesale property. You ask their permission. Hey, Travis, is it cool with you if I put this out on my stuff and try to sell it? Yeah, absolutely, totally cool with me. But you best remember to mark up your fee because I ain't paying you. I learned this lesson the hard time one time. One time. <coughs> I told, told you I made a thousand dollars. That's the least I've ever made. Forgot to mark it up. Know your price versus my price versus somebody else's price. Whoever you're getting the deal from, make sure you know that number. Because yes, we're try to we try to be a nice family in the wholesale pool, but not everybody's nice, and they'll drown you so they're not competing with somebody else. Could you imagine that happens in this industry? It does. Know your numbers. Identifying whole wholesale properties. To your point, the best way to find wholesale properties is your own dang self. It takes work. It takes grinding. You're going to have to schedule time. Not only are you going to call for trying to get buyer leads and listing leads, but you're also going to be trying to get wholesale leads. It happens. If you want to develop a part of your business, you're going to have to put in the work. So whoever came to this class thinking it was just going to be free money, sorry. And uh, that you got to put in the work. So I find deals off of Craigslist. I find them on classifieds. Um, I find them most of the time within my database. The people that I've known, the, the biggest profits that we've had, excuse me, have been from you know Susie's aunties, monkeys, cousins, cousins, uncle, and that had a, inherited a property. They don't want to deal with it. Can you help me out? I bet I'm here to help you. And that also leads to if I help them with this. Then they want to buy something. They have money now that they want to invest in their family, in their family's home. So it generates that relationship, generates multiple deals. MLS, stuff that's on the market for 180 days or more. Are we seeing that? It's starting. Yeah, it's starting. If the house has been on the market for 180 days, is that seller ready to do a deal? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Database, social media. I put on my database, often, or on my social media, if you follow me on Facebook, um, I'll give you my Facebook thing. Hey, I buy houses for cash. I'll have that posted. I'll have posts about, hey, this is the 66 lane project. This is what we're doing. It, by putting those things out there, it shows people this is what we do. So go on these appointments, do some video, talk about what you're doing. If people don't know, we can't be a secret agent and we can't be a secret wholesaler. Don't work so well. If you're secret, nobody knows. Um, 
Nope. There's there's uh, when we find them ourselves, there's a lot bigger margins. We can work. We're not paying somebody else. We're not paying another wholesaler. I have in the past gotten wholesale deals from other buddies and friends of mine <coughs> that I know that bring me deals and they make the majority of it. I tack on maybe three to five grand. You know, it's three to five grand I didn't have yesterday. I don't care. You know, it's another drop in the bucket. Keep it rolling. Volume, volume, don't be selfish. Do another deal, keep it rolling. All right, the offer process, what you guys have been waiting for. We're gonna go over some details here. When we're gonna make an offer on a wholesale property, we have to do this in person. You're gonna have to drive your butt over to the house, knock on the door, have an appointment, and talk with that seller. You have to establish a relationship. Um, you're granted this. Coming up and just finding some place that you can identify with that person. Oftentimes, when I go to the door, I'm a bigger guy. I turn sideways, so it's not like I'm at the door. <laughs> like, just little things like that. I back off, I slouch a little bit. I turn sideways so I'm not imposing at the door. Little things like this are really important. Thank God for my communications degree because it's those <laughs> nonverbal things that have helped me so much in this. These are the things that will help you too. If you're a lady, please take someone with you. Okay? And I'm not talking, not being sexist, I'm not being that. I just want everybody to be safe. Is that fair enough to say? Yeah. Okay. Um, establish that relationship. Usually when you knock on the door, there's kids screaming and dogs barking and there's all kinds of chaos going on because something happened in this person's life. They're going through a divorce. They've got medical bills. Um, they got sued. They, were, they got in a car crash. Some are, they're dying of cancer. Like There's some reason that they need your help. Be sensitive. Be sensitive, be sensitive, be sensitive. You're not there to wheel and deal. You're there to help. Come with that attitude. If you come in there like, Money. <laughs> There's a guy here in town that pulls up with a wholesale deal in his Ferrari, <laughs> his Lamborghini, and he videos and talks shit about how awesome he is. He's such an amazing guy. He's an asshole. By the way, he comes off to people. It's. Do you see what I'm saying? The difference there. People go, Oh, yeah, so much money. You can buy my house. Yeah, he's gonna beat you down to buy your house. He's not helping you. He's ripping you off. Is that who we want to be? No. So if what we're trying to do is help them out of their situation so we can again help them in the future. Keep that in mind. We want to know now, once we're there, it's the discovery process. How do we do this deal? What deal needs to be done? What needs to be done to the house? When? Are they under a deadline? Do they need to get this done like next week? Uh, the fastest I've done a wholesale is 24 hours. Bought, sold it, done. Transfer the ownership to a third party. So. Going back a minute, because my brain works that way. Um, you said any MLS that's on, the, any property on the MLS <coughs> on the one days. But if you're going to go to the seller, we can't approach somebody else's client. I'm going to talk to you about that. Okay, talk to you. Good pick up. Good yes. pick up. We're going to talk about here in a few minutes. Now I can catch up my brain up to where we are. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we want to know what's going on in this property and the story. You want to know the story. Why do they need to sell this? One of the ladies I visited with about 18 months ago, uh, she's bedridden. She was a paralytic. Um, she had a lot of medical issues. Her best friend married her to help her with medical insurance. And he was there with her. There was 12 chihuahuas that were vicious and bit the crap out of my ankles and they were not required to use the restroom anywhere but other than where they wanted oh to so in her bed there was piles like it was just rough but my heart went out to her in her situation she needed help she had they had started a remodel which you gotta love homeowner specials usually it starts with either a crack of a beer or a hit and then we're having this great <laughs> idea of what we're going to do to remodel our house. <laughs> so they decided that they no longer needed the third bedroom of the three bedroom, two bath. And they thought it would be a grand idea to turn that into a closet. And that was about 50% done. Electrical was hanging everywhere. It was a bomb. She needed help. So I helped her. 
We found another investor, they did the remodel, everybody won. And we got her into a place where she was safe, where she was, could be clean, where she could get the medical help she needed. So those are the stories. Those are the reasons why we do this. Because everyone has a family. Everyone has someone that's hurting, right? My mother was in the hospital right now. It happens. There's pain involved in life. We're here to be that salve, the salve, the ointment on that pain. We're here to help. Set that appointment. Talk to the people. All right. Now we're going to go on the visit. So whether that happened on the phone or that was your first visit, you're going to have, this is the next step, per se. We're going to do our homework before we talk turkey, before we get involved with numbers at all. On the first time I, I usually go to meet with them, I don't talk numbers. All right. Most of the time, all the other wholesalers, the first thing they come in and slap a contract on the table and go, okay, here's, a, here's my best offer. You know, take it or leave it. You get so much for that. I've bought houses for less than other wholesalers have offered because they wanted to work with me, because I was kind, because my heart went out to them. That's why we do it this way. Do your homework. Check Monsoon, go on Maricopa County Assessor, look at previous MLS listings. You wanna see pictures. What, what was this? Because a lot of times, like I was talking about, those homeowner specials come into effect. I, we've bought houses that had square footage added that did not reflect on Maricopa County. We purchased the house, remodeled the house, was getting ready to put it on the market, and hey, Maricopa County, um, this seems a little bit bigger than the house that we bought. Would you mind swinging by and checking it out? The previous owner didn't want to pay taxes on the additional square feet that they added non permitted. But now, Maricopa County, we rolled in, and this was a uh, address was 1617 East Flower, I think. We were in Arcadia Light. Um, I got an additional 250 square feet added to the property. That by itself bounced the value of that property $40,000. So knowing these things help tremendously, knowledge helps tremendously with your with your investors. So we're gonna reestablish that relationship when we visit with them again. Hey, this is Travis. How's your kids doing? Or, I love your dog, or you know, baseball, man, how those speak and dime back, whatever. Um, we're gonna verify. Hey, I looked this up on Maricopa County. It says your house is 1,600 square feet. When I was there, it seemed bigger than that. Oh yeah. Um, when mom owned the house before uncle so-and-so came over and they enclosed the, the carport I don't know if you noticed that you usually can pick up on that when you're there but you know and then they tell you the story okay cool did you guys use a contractor no we we just had these guys come over beer and pizza and we knocked it out you know okay cool so we know now how to address it if we know what happened take pictures when you go on this appointment you get your iPhone out, get your Android, whatever. Take a zillion pictures. The front of the house, a few different angles. The back of the house, side of the house, roof, AC. We want to see everything that's, if the fence, if the fence isn't right. Anything that you pick up on, like, oh my gosh, there's a waterfall inside the house. There's not supposed to be. You take a picture of it so that we know what's going on. If you smell a funk when you're in the bathroom, hey, is it okay if I open up the cabinet? Open the cabinet. Oh my gosh, there's green hairy stuff growing here. <laughs> Take a picture. We want to know these things. Then we're going to set the tone. Hey, I work with the team. And I want to present your property as a potential for purchase. I really want to help you. I really want to help you. Where's the inflection? I really want to help you. I'll bring you a cash offer. Where's the inflection? Cash. Cash. Why is that important? Because I don't want to wait on my money. I'm not waiting on an appraisal. I'm not waiting on a loan. We've got cash. Does that compete these days? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All that does wins. <laughs> now we're going to do a price drop. Usually during the where, what, why, how, you're going to have a conversation that's like, so, do you have an idea of what you're looking for to get out of this property? Usually that's when son-in-law or uncle or someone, well on Zillow, it says this property is worth four million dollars. Awesome, that's great. Do you have an idea of really what you think it's worth? 
well, I really want to see you, you know, I know how you guys work, you know, I know we're going to get beat up on Cool, you know, I'm here to help your family member. Are, are, you, are you here to help them too? Yeah, okay, well then, let's talk about if I, were, if I were a contractor, if you were a contractor, what needs to get fixed? You know, your waterfall, it's a problem. <laughs> The hairy cabinets, that's a problem. Is anyone going to pay retail for this? Zillow's retail. Are you going to fix this? No, we don't have any money. Okay, well, I know someone who does. But we need to come to an agreement so everybody wins. So, do the nature of the repairs associated with this property. Now, it's not a home, not a house. The associated repairs due to this, that this property needs, take the emotion out of it. How much money are we going to need to complete X, Y, and Z? Obviously, the buyer knows that they need to do this. So you've lived in this. Your family's lived in this. You've used it. At this point, it's an unsellable asset on the retail market. I'm here to help you. What do you think a number will be that we can come to an agreement on? And shut up. <laughs> shut up. Before you talk, shut up. <laughs> the first one to talk loses. Shut up. Let them hem and haw. Let them tell you the story. Let them tell you whatever. Let them tell you about whatever. Dogs, cats, their uncles, monkeys, whatever. Let them talk. It's going to be a little uncomfortable. Bring them back. Hey, I'm really sorry about what happened with your, your dog two years ago. And, you know, I wish your uncle a lot of blessings in his new pot endeavor. Whatever it is, you know, I've had these stories, they're truth, okay? So, but back to the subject matter, what do you think we can do here? And again, shut up. Let them bring it up. And then, you know the numbers. You've ran comps. You know what market value is, right? What's market value? And is that retail or wholesale? No tell. What's wholesale? 70%. Seventy percent. Seventy percent. Seventy percent. If we capture an eighty, we'll deal with it. Seventy percent. That's what we're trying to capture. Does this make sense? <laughs> Is this logically coming together in your brain on how to do this? Yes. All right. Cool. <coughs> uh, make the offer. You're gonna reinforce your relationship. We're here to help. Present the offer in person or over the. I, I don't like doing it over the phone. I, I, I just I'm a firm believer face to face. This is one of those type of deals. Mm -hmm. um, and hey, we close this in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So, why are people going with, I think Steve, Steve Valentine calls them Zoo, Zillow right. Offer Pad, uh, Open Door, 72 sold. Why are they going with those guys? Because they advertise and They can close quick and we're gonna give you this great offer, right? It's gonna be near retail, just a little bit less, right? All right, let's talk about the process. All of those guys, every single one that's up there, they come in and they're going to give you an offer about 10% of, of market value. Then, in the additional terms, they say, we need a 10 working day inspection period. What does that actually buy them? 14 to 16 days. 14 to 16 days with holidays and weekends, right? Meanwhile, Joe Blow homeowner is like, yes, I sold my house. Let's go buy another one. <laughs> and they buy another house. <laughs> Contingent. They get another house. And then open door offer Pat Zillow comes back and goes, hey, our inspection. Mm, remember that hairy cabinet? Remember the waterfall? That really we need another 30% discount. And then what happens to Joe Blow buyer and or Joe Blow seller? They've already posted on Instagram. And TikTok, I got my new house. They're posting all about it. They're telling everybody in their family. They're telling everybody they know they got this new house. They still have the equity to pull it off, but they just took it in the shorts to save face, to not be embarrassed to say, hey, I got screwed by the big dog. 72 sold is the same bullshit. Mm -hmm. I got to look like so. <laughs> Yeah, I want to show you guys this sausage. Um, our proven track record in the valley that really I need to make sure you guys know. In the past 15 years, I've canceled three deals. 
three deals out of 600 plus that I put down. I canceled three deals. If I'm in, I'm in. If I give my word, I give my word. I have a great, great rapport, I have a great name and reputation in the wholesale world with our investors. If Travis says it's a deal, it's a deal. That's the reputation you're wanting to develop. If you work with me on this, you inherit that relationship, you inherit that re reputation. Writing the contract, I have got 11 minutes, so we're, I'm gonna try to be cognizant of your guys' time. Um, <coughs> I use standard AAR forms. I have in the past used the two pagers. They're terrifying me now. So again, the reason why you wanna be licensed is so that you know these AR forms back and forward. It protects you, it protects the investor, and it protects the seller. You must use AAR forms, especially in this brokerage. Um, and if you're from a different brokerage, your broker's gonna insist on using AAR forms. What you wanna include with your offer, purchase contract, market conditions, HOA, We've got an affiliated business, blah, blah, blah. You probably need that too. Be aware, some of the properties in Arcadia, the Alight, they're on wells, they're on septic. You get in the outlying areas, be aware, you're gonna need those for those too. And also be ready with a requalification or a proof of funds. Do you guys have that? Some of your investors will, but if you're working with me, I'm pre-qualified for them. So I have 25 cash, or 25 um, hard money lenders, and they'll back whatever, so. Here's what we're gonna put in <coughs> section eight, <coughs> lines 344. Buyer retains the right of a double escrow and seller acknowledges the buyer's intent to close this transaction as an assignment or double escrow. This is the camera time. I'm gonna move out of the way so you guys can take it. <laughs> so what does this mean, guys? But you can sell it before you even do anything. So, so when I go into contract, or you guys go into contract, what's our inspection period? Ten days. Since we're using standard AAR forms. Ten days. Ten days. What's my window to sell this thing? Ten days. Ten days. So that gives them notification, and I say it this way: Hey, I work with five hundred business partners. I may be doing a joint venture. <laughs> I may be doing a double escrow, I may be doing an assignment. I'm gonna put this in front of the most, um, the most opportune of our investors to come and partner with me on this. I have the funds to do it myself, but a lot of times I like to work with my friends. So that's how I explain that. Buyer and seller are aware that this transaction is for the intended profit of both parties. What do I have to disclose there? That I'm making money. This is a really nice way of saying it. I want them to make money too. If they don't make money, are they happy? Nope. No, this has gotta be a, a win, win, win. Win for the seller, win for the middle guys, ladies, and a win for the, the investor at the end. Uh, buyer and seller agree to extend the close of escrow as needed to identify and cure any additional items that may prevent the seller from providing the buyer a free and clear title. <laughs> That's a long way of saying, I wanna make sure title is clean. Um, I was in a deal that was up in Black Canyon City. It was an inherited property. They couldn't produce a death certificate. By having this in my contract and also putting it into the secondary contract for the double escrow, it protected all the parties. They tried to sell it to somebody else, but they couldn't because it was in our contract. <coughs> Close of escrow shall be on or before X date. You're going to put, obviously, you're going to put that in the first page of the contract, but this gives you the freedom that if you can pull it off before and everybody's agreed to it, you can make it happen. One or more members of GGB Enterprises LLC is a licensed realtor. That is my LLC. It's our contracting company, but also the company that we use to buy, buy and sell homes. Bonus term. I don't put this in every contract. I will put it in my double escrow, but I will not always kick this out to the seller. Buyer agrees to pay all closing fees. <coughs> Why? Why don't I put that on the contract to this, that I am working with the seller? Because I'm the buyer. <laughs> buyer <at that. laughs> so why do I put it on the double escrow side or the assignment side? 
buyer for the buyer. Because there's another buyer, not me. That that's that right there saves you fifteen hundred bucks. Uh, buyer waives appraisal contingency and accepts property and whereas as is condition. Obviously the contract, we all know the contract, it is an as is contract. But the person you're working with, the seller doesn't know that. They're gonna be, this is as is. Totally, it's right here in the contract, I'm putting it here. So you can see it as is. So I'm not making any repairs, cool, as is, right on. Buyer waves, uh, buyer is not represented and seller is not represented. This is something you need to be careful with. Depending on how we do this deal, to your point, if we're finding something on the MLS that's 180 days old and you're representing me as the buyer, then yeah, there's a commission here too that needs to be dealt with and a commission on the other side. So what I do with my home group agents and other agents that want to work with me, we split the commission and we split 50-50 <coughs> whatever money we make on the wholesale. So my buddy Josh, who's in our group, we bought a house in Sun City. There was a 2% commission. He and I each got a point from the, on closing from the real estate side. We sold that house for $12,000, $15,000 to the investor. So each split 15 grand. So total for a $145,000 deal, we walked away each with, my, I'm tired, I've been talking for a while, so what was that, two? Two points, so $3,000, $1,500, $9,000 each on a $150,000, $140,000 deal. Is that worth your time? Yeah. Yeah, and we closed in two weeks. Is that worth your time? Heck yeah, it is. Yes. Quick question. So instead of double escrow, how is that managed to show another buyer the property that are you working with the seller right now? Remember all the pictures we took? So they cannot go access their website. Do you remember on my email I said call me for access? Uh -huh. So I'm going to be during my inspection period. Hey, my friend Paul. I'm going to bring him. He's going to come and do the inspection. Gotcha. So Paul's my buyer. We're going to critique the house, figure out if this is going to work for him numbers wise, and they say yes, and I sell it during the inspection period. We're selling the case. Yes! <laughs> Under contract. <laughs> Guys, it is 257. I want to be cognizant of your time. Is everybody okay if we run a few minutes over? Okay, just want to be fair. Before you market the property, before you send the text, before you send the email, make sure you're under contract. <laughs> I worked in, uh, when I first started my home group, I had an office in Arrowhead. Brand new agent came in. She was so excited. I got my first listing. And I think we're, we might be able to wholesale it. In walks a veteran agent. Oh my gosh, tell me about it. Oh, the address is blah, blah, blah. The seller's name is blah, blah, blah. I'm putting the paperwork together right now. Travis, can you help me do this? I hear all this from the office. I'm like, oh shit. Veteran agent goes, oh, you know what? I gotta go. Gets in the car, drives herself over to, you understand working with Elise? She's a brand new agent. This is her first deal. I'm an investor. I'd really like to help you with this. Is it okay if I step in? They hadn't signed anything. Stole the deal. So, like every industry, there's snakes in our business, so keep your freaking mouth shut. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Once you have a contract, <laughs> then you can talk. File an affidavit of equitable interest with the title company. I use Kim Stembridge at First Arizona Title. She's only been doing this for 29 years. She's the smartest person I know. She keeps my butt covered from the title perspective all the time. So I have a few others I'll share with you in a few minutes, but really matters. Don't share with anybody until you have another contract. <laughs> Marketing, shared on social media, we already talked about that. Email blast, um, I mentioned before, I've got 500 cash buyers. If you find something, you need to offload it, call me. Exit strategies. Like I mentioned before, new investors only have so many exit strategies. Full-time investors have all of it. So. You can assign it, you can do a double escrow, you can fix and flip it, you can do a JV or a joint venture, you can turn it into a rental, or like my buddies Chris and Rusty that I learned from, they do rent to own. They have 500 properties here in town that are rent to own. 
they do big deposits to people who have crap credit, who lo and behold can't make their payments and screw things up, and then they get the house back and resell that house. Did I mention he's worth $8 million? <laughs> Assignment versus double escrow. I've been using these terms. I'm sure the question has been coming up. What does this mean? I'm sorry, I keep approaching. I'm trying to give you room. So an assignment, this means, what's your name? Nayeli. Nayeli. So I buy the house. And then my friend Nayeli, she says, hey Travis, I want this investment. I want to do this. I then do an assignment page, which is like a one pager that transfers my role my, 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 as the buyer, to nail it. She has to abide by the contract. She gets to see my contract. She knows what I bought it for. She knows my assignment fee. Is she still going to be my friend? Probably not. Depends on the fee. Exactly. My rule of thumb, if I'm making more than $5,000, I do a double escrow every time. If I'm making more than five grand, I do a double escrow every <coughs> time. That way nobody gets their feelings hurt. Out of my 500 cash buyers, I've had one guy that was a pain in the ass, and he went back after six months and goes, dude, what the hell? Like, what do you mean, what the hell? Goes, you made $20,000 on that job. All you did was sell me the paper. I'm like, well, I was working on that for three months. But yeah, you were happy with the price, weren't you? Well, yeah. So what's the problem? Well, you made 20 grand. <laughs> so that's one out of 500 and out of over 600. So it doesn't happen very often, but I value the relationships enough to protect myself and protect them from themselves. Um, they need an assignment agreement and there's an end user with a nominee statement from title. Double escrow. Yay. I love double escrows. It's a simultaneous close of escrow. So you're gonna have two contracts with two sellers and two buyers. On the first leg, I'm the buyer. On the second leg, I'm the seller. And it all happens magically at the time. It's beautiful. Uh, funding, <laughs> funding for the first leg comes from the second leg. I know it sounds a little confusing and I can give you a lot more detail later, but this is a nuts and bolts. Um, assignment. An assignment means there's only one set of title fees. So that 1500 bucks, that's it. That's all the title fees. When you do a double escrow, there's double the fees. We still do a hold open, but we absorb those of us in the middle. So if you bring me a deal and we're gonna do a double, double escrow, we absorb those fees in the middle so that everybody stays happy. It is a cost of doing business. Don't get butt hurt over this, okay? Just don't, because it's not worth it. You're gonna make money. We're all gonna make money. Um, it's easier, and uh, we were talking about that. Um, it allows you to keep your earnings and your price point private. Okay, fix and flip. Uh, with a fix and flip, you have to have funding. You have to have a source of capital. You have to know trade contractors or have a DIY knowledge. There was a law in the state of Arizona that if you own the property, you could do whatever the heck you want. That's changed. Now the registered contractors being that there's so many flippers in town, they require a license. Oftentimes, we as sales agents need to be a lot more knowledgeable about this. If, the, if your buyer is buying a flip, we need to ask one for the spuds and two for the receipt. If it's not a licensed general contractor that didn't work, somebody's monkey's, uncle's brother's monkey did it. And it shows how many of us have been in awful flips. Pounded dog poop, right? We don't want that. We want to protect our buyer, which is also why I got the license, so I can protect our investors. So when I do a flip, here's the receipt. Here's every detail in what we did in the house. It's part of the disclosure. Uh, the risk is your own. Your risk is your biscuit. Um, you have to have some type of decorator insight. This is usually where I get the folks like, oh my gosh, oh, it's Chip and John. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And they get so excited. Awesome. That's great. But we also need to back that down because what people tend to do is they get so excited about Chip and Johanna, they want to just throw all their creative energy into this flip. But it's stupid tax because they put way too much money. 
We did a condo um, off of Central and Indian School. Great friend of mine. His wife was like, yes, I finally get to decorate the way I want. And our budget went from $20,000 to $35,000. And they ended up having to hold it for almost six months before we sold it. We still made money. We didn't lose, but it sucked. It was awful. The stress over overbuilding <coughs> because we overbuilt. So we want to be careful when we're helping with this. But stick to the budget. Don't pay stupid tax. Joint ventures. Um, we coach and train new investors. We teach them, hey, where do you put money? What's wise spend? What is not a wise spend? What's the market dictating right now? That's why you guys as real estate agents are so valuable to your investors. You know what's going on in the market. You have a grand idea of what's selling. You know that it pays, it's gonna pay dividends to put a new floor in versus put a fountain in the backyard. It's gonna pay more dividends to do countertops versus making a cool patio. Like, you know where the money needs to go. Partner with someone who has the skill set and work on getting multiple deals and risk management. Resources. Here's four. Four of my private lenders. Tyler Stone, Greg Reichman, Scott Gould. He is like freaking godfather of, <laughs> of wholesales and fix and flips here in, in uh, Phoenix. And Brandon Ochenaro. Um, this is four of the 25 we work with. Oh, sorry. Did everybody get that? Okay. Tile companies. Kim, she's number one. She's amazing. Okay. She, you can attest. Oh she is gosh. the best yeah. out there. And not only for fix and flips, double escrows, triple escrows, rent rolls, all the crazy stuff, she knows all of it. She also does a heck of a job. Her and the team with just everyday transactions. Kim Gritz, Shell Davis, Nohemi, and Shelly. I've done wholesales with all of these ladies. They're fantastic. Resources, one thing. The no. resources. Can you show them? Thank you. Okay. Have you guys got value today? Mm -hmm. yeah. This. I have a wholesale master class. If this interests you, I do a master <coughs> class. It's a one day intensive, and I teach you how to basically from step one to making calls that day to find wholesale properties. If it interests you. When is it? <laughs> <laughs> the next one is on September 29th. Um, this is like a secret. Hi, my name is Lockable Goza. I am a realtor with my home group. I have been in real estate for good, almost 15 years now. And um, I took the wholesale, the master wholesale class taught by Travis Smith with the Elite Terry Group. And what a fantastic class. Uh, anybody who knows me knows that I've always wanted to be on the investment side of real estate. And even though I've been in the real estate business a long time and you know I've seen a lot of ups and downs and, and a lot of renovations, I've also seen a lot of people make mistakes and I've seen a lot of people lose a lot of money not knowing what they were doing and I always said well you know when the time is right for me um, I need to get you know with the right people and have the right contacts and, and uh, definitely have the right mentor and um, this class was so well rounded and it really um, explained it about as simple as wholesale can be explained <laughs> And um, the resources uh, available to us um, are incredible. I mean, this the, when you finish taking this class, it's pretty much plug and play. Um, you can either start doing <laughs> your home renovations, uh, but there's also other ways to make income. So uh, either way, if you're doing uh, what you're taught, you know you will make money right off the bat. So. Uh, thank you so much, Travis, for putting this this uh, classic. I'm not just going to tell you about it. I'm going to give you an example of someone who's gone through a class. So I've taught six wholesale master classes. Every person that's gone through it has made money. Uh, like I said, it costs 
we give mentoring and coaching. It's 1100 bucks per day. So if it's coming up on uh, September 29th, if this interests you, I'll reach out to you. <coughs> Just let me know if you're interested in enrolling. Every single one who's gone through the class has done a deal and they got their investment back in the first deal. So it's if you don't pay for it, you are not going to value it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is stuff we cover in the one day intensive just to kind of give you an idea. We're talking about creating an LLC, a separate LLC from your real estate business and why. We're going to talk about the risk factors and why it's so important to have that in place. We're going to help you develop an investor database right off the bat. We're going to teach you how to brand yourself as a wholesaler, how to engage social media, social media to market your wholesale business. We're going to talk about properly evaluating rehab costs. We have all seen the wholesales out there. Two hundred thousand dollar wholesale price, twenty bucks is all you need to put into it, and you'll make, you know, fourteen million dollars. <laughs> so we've seen that. We are going to be honest. We're going to tell people, right? That's why people come back. Uh, we're going to responsibly diagnose ARV. Same thing. Why it's so important to have a real estate license? Why you do this? Because you're held accountable to tell the truth. Um, we're going to help you find and leverage hard money lenders, how to work with other wholesalers to provide product for your database. We go over call scripts, what to say, how to say it, how to get rolling. And the next date is on uh, September 29th. We go from 9 to 3, 9 to 3.30. Uh, lunch is provided. You know, we'll have a good time. It's always a party. Um, we also, at Elite Integrity Group, we provide one-on-one -on -one mentoring and coaching. Uh, if you have questions about that, can I yeah. Haley's here. She's part of our group. Uh, right now we have six agents. I am pick. I don't take everybody. So if there's, if you want to talk to me about that after the fact, I can give you the breakdown about what Elite Integrity Group does and how we incorporate all aspects of real estate. Um, we introduce you to our established relationships with industry partners, um, other sources of other people's money, all that stuff. Definitely priceless. Thank you. Yeah. Here's my contact information. <laughs> Facebook, Insta, all that stuff. I'm now getting on TikTok. TikTok is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> such an addict. Such an addict. <coughs> Questions? Can you your contact Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you guys so much. I'm sorry I ran 12 minutes over. Shame on you. I hope it was valuable to you all. I appreciate the time, sir. Thank you. 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 Call next point for you. Thank you for coming. Nice to meet you. I'm going to call you too. Okay, call me. <laughs> oh my gosh, call me. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry.